Hi, we're here with Jerry Janish from Keithley Instruments. And what we have here on the table next to us is a digitizing DMM that incor incorporates a touch screen the way you would control a screen on a smartphone. We thought that was an interesting development, interesting enough that it was worth going through a short demo. Jerry, first of all, tell us why Keithley decided to put a touch screen like this on a DMM. Hello, Lee. Thank you. Uh, the reason is really ease of use and learnability of the instrument and what we call interacting with your, your data, or interacting with a waveform. And uh, we'll show you some pictures of uh, what we mean by that. So very easy to move from a smartphone to, uh, to now operating a digital multimeter with, uh, with these graphing capabilities. So how do you set up a measurement on this thing? Well, let's, uh, let's show you. This is uh, showing you the front panel of our model DMM 7510. It's a seven and a half digit, uh, and what we're calling a new class of multimeter, what we're calling a graphical sampling multimeter. Uh, if you wanted to, what we're showing here is uh, the front panel taking a DC voltage measurement off of a shorting block that we have uh, plugged into the, the front panel jacks. And as you can see, it's making measurements in the order of about 10 nanovolts. Um, and if you wanted to simply move to a two-wire resistance uh, setup, you just simply hit two-wire ohms, and uh, it'll begin taking uh, resistance measurements for you. So very easy to set up. Now, again, we, we've incorporated a very flat menu structure uh, on this DMM. So if you wanted to go in and change any of the uh, settings uh, for uh, two-wire resistance, you can very easily begin to uh, swipe uh, the bottom half of the screen and go off and you can change your NPLC, uh, NPLC rates. Uh, if you wanted to turn off auto zero or rel, then you, you can do that. Or if you wanted to get into some of the other um, settings in a two-wire resistance me measurement, uh, you just hit this little icon on here, and then you get a full display to go off and uh, change uh, anything on two-wire resistance uh, the measurement function. Jerry, one of the things this thing is capable of is uh, graphing, and that's where some of the uh, touch screen functions really come in handy. Could you show that to us? Absolutely. So the nice thing again, we, we talk about this bottom half being a swipe screen, so let's go over and let's look at uh, graphing on here. And that's what we're showing right here. So you're getting your measurements and a graph of all your readings uh, going into the uh, reading buffer. Uh, if you wanted to uh, see a large picture of that, you can just hit this little icon here and you get a um, a representation, graphical representation of that uh, of that signal. And so now, and, and, and this makes it very easy to use because now instead of sending data over to a PC and graphing it in Excel or something like that, you can now see your data visually right on the front panel of the uh, of this instrument. And if you wanted to, again, you can kind of pinch and zoom. Hold on here, let me, let me stop the reading and Go off and pinch and zoom and look at all of uh, all of your readings. So if you're interested in this point up here, you can kind of pinch and zoom and see exactly uh, what you have. Jerry, one of the um, distinguishing features of this meter is that it's a digitizing meter. Can you explain to our viewers uh, what that really does for you? Absolutely. So <clears throat> as Lee, as you make mention here, so what we uh, let's look at the different functions that we have in the DMM. So a lot of your traditional DMM functions are built in, so voltage and AC voltage, temperature, uh, frequency, capacitance. But we also built in two new feature sets that really make this a, what we're calling a graphical sampling meter, and that's being able to digitize voltage and digitize current. And we do that by building in a one mega sample per second, 18-bit digitizer uh, for either voltage or current. And um, we can run through a quick demonstration on that. Um, you typically would not envision a, um, a DMM, uh, you know, showing you a sine wave, but uh, let's quickly uh, go through a demo and actually show it digitizing. So <clears throat> what we're going to do here is um, generate a <clears throat> tone from my 
phone using a function generator app. This is a free app that you can either get on an iPhone or, or Android operating systems. And um, we have it plugged into a uh, microphone, so that's taking this tone, audio tone, and converting it into a voltage. And we're going to go through and actually digitize that signal in the DMM. And uh, so let me just set up a quick demonstration mode we have to uh, run through and uh, capture that kind of a waveform. So let me go ahead. Th right now it's uh, just capturing noise because I haven't turned on my function generator. So I will turn on my function generator. This is actually creating a one kilohertz sine wave. And I will go ahead and turn that on. And there you go. Now you can see a one kilohertz sine wave. Uh, I'll go ahead and change the frequency. Let's go down to 500 hertz or two kilohertz or you know, even up to uh, four kilohertz. And uh, you can uh, very easily see that, uh, that signal. Now, if you wanted to go in and, and let's say ex examine that signal, let's say this was Ripple on, uh, on a power supply design, very easily go in, put it into manual mode, and then actually go in and then analyze that signal and, uh, and take a look at that uh, ripple. Uh, we've also built in capability for uh, setting up cursors on here. So if you wanted to set up um, vertical cursors to get a time span, so if we wanted to figure out what that frequency was on that DMM, we would simply bring in our two uh, vertical cursors and then look down here and it's giving you that's roughly about uh, uh, 977 microseconds is what you're saying so very close to a, a one kilohertz sine wave similarly if you wanted to measure the amplitude on that signal you can go off and look at the horizontal bars and then dial those in the same way and, and horizontally uh, see what the delta voltage was between those two points Jerry, how would you capture a transient event with this? That's a great question. So in addition uh, to this capability, we, we also had to beef up the triggering aspects of this DMM. And because uh, when, when transients occur, you don't know when they are going to occur. So you can actually set a level trigger on this uh, DMM to capture a certain uh, transient event. And uh, let's run through a quick demonstration of that. So in this in this state of the DMM, we've uh, pre-programmed in a level trigger on this DMM, and it's off, as you can see in the upper right-hand corner here, it's waiting for the trigger event to happen. So it's waiting for this voltage level to occur. And what I'll do is I'll just start jumping up the volume level on this um, sine wave that's appearing here, and it'll s slowly activate that level, and that's what you're seeing on here. You're seeing a diamond indicate, hey, the level trigger occurred right here, and it captures both pre-data and then also post-data. So now you can go in and analyze that signal uh, using the cursors and kind of swiping and uh, looking at uh, your information. So in a transient situation, again, you would program a voltage level. Um, and uh, when it occurred, you'd be able to see what happened before and then also what happened after, pre and post uh, uh, data. Well, Jerry, that's a... Uh DMM that has a lot of capabilities. I think it'll be um, well used by engineers. If they want to find out how to get, a, get it or uh, get more information about it, where do they go? Yes, uh, the DMM 7510, uh, if you need any more information on it, go to www.keithley.com and you can search on DMM 7510 and uh, you'll be able to get more information on our new graphical sampling uh, multimeter.